I was visiting MIT looking for a place to get a PhD, and I wanted to do some laboratory work. And uh, one of my professors at, in the aero department said, go see this guy, Mark Rabert, down in the basement of the AI lab. And so I walked down there and saw him. He showed me his robots, and he showed me this robot doing a somersault. And I just immediately went, whoa, you know? Yeah. Robots can do that, and because of my own interest in, in gymnastics, there was like this immediate connection. And, um, you know, I was interested in, I was in an aero astro degree because, of, you know, flight and movement was all so fascinating to me. And then it turned out that, you know, robotics had this big challenge. How do you, how do you balance? Uh, how do you, how do you build a legged robot that can really get around? And that just, that was a fascination. And it still exists today. You're still working on perfecting motion in robots. What about the elegance and the beauty of the movement itself? Is, is there something maybe grounded in your appreciation of uh, movement from your gymnastics days? Did you, was there something you just fundamentally appreciate about the elegance and beauty of movement? You know, we had this concept in, in gymnastics of um, letting your body do what it wanted to do. When you get really good at gymnastics, um, part of what you're doing is putting your, your body into a position where the physics and the body's inertia and momentum will kind of push you in the right direction in a very natural and organic way. And the thing that Mark was doing, you know, in the um, basement of that laboratory was trying to figure out how to build machines to take advantage of those ideas. How do you build something so that the physics of the machine just kind of inherently wants to do what it wants to do? And he was building these springy pogo stick type. You know, his first cut at legged locomotion was a pogo stick where it's bouncing and there's a spring mass uh, system that's oscillating, has its own sort of natural frequency there. And sort of figuring out how to augment those natural physics um, with also intent, how do you then control that but not overpower it? It's that coordination that I think creates real potential. We could call it beauty. You know, you could call it, I don't know, synergy. Mm -hmm. uh, that people have different words for it. Uh, but I think that that was inherent uh, from the beginning. That was clear to me that, that that's part of what Mark was trying to do. He asked me to do that uh, in my research work. So, um, you know, that's where it got going. So part of the thing that I think I'm calling elegance and beauty in this case, which was there, even with the pogo stick, is maybe a, the, the efficiency. So letting the body do what it wants to do, trying to discover the efficient movement. It's definitely more efficient. It also... Um, becomes easier to control in its own way because the, the physics are solving some of the problem itself. It's not like you have to do all this calculation and overpower the physics. The physics naturally, inherently want to do the right thing. Uh, there can even be you know, uh, feedback mechanisms, stabilizing mechanisms that occur simply by virtue of the physics of the body. And it's you know, not all not all in the computer or not even all in your mind as a person. <laughs> and I, there's something interesting in that, that uh, melding. You were with Mark for many, many, many years, but you were there in this kind of legendary space uh, of uh, Leg Lab and MIT in the, in, in the basement. All great things happen in the basement. Is there some <laughs> memories, uh, is there some memories from that time that you have? Because it's so, it's such cutting edge work. In, in, in robotics and in artificial intelligence? The memories, the distinctive lessons, I would say, I, I learned in that, in that time period, and, um, and that I think Mark was a great teacher of, was uh, it's okay to pursue your interests, your curiosity, do something because you love it. Um, you'll do it a lot better if you love it. Um, that, that is a, a lasting lesson that I think uh, we apply at the company still, um, and really is a core value. So the interesting thing is I got to, um, uh, with people like Ross Tedrick and, um, and others, like the students that work at those robotics labs are like some of the happiest people I've ever met. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I meet a lot of PhD students. A lot of them are kind of broken by the wear and tear <laughs> of the process. Uh, but roboticists are, while they work extremely hard and work long hours, there's um, 
there's a happiness there. The only other group of people I met like that are people that skydive a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like for for some reason, there's a deep fulfilling happiness. Maybe from like a long period of struggle to get a thing to work and it works and there's a magic to it. I don't know exactly because it's so fundamentally hands-on and you're bringing a thing to life. I don't know what it is, but they're happy. We see, you know, our, our attrition at the company is really low. People come and they love the pursuit. And I think part of that is that there's perhaps a natural connection to it. It's a little bit easier to connect when you have a robot that's moving around in the world. And part of your goal is to make it move around in the world. You can identify with that. And, and this, is on a, this is one of the unique things about the kinds of robots we're building is this physical interaction lets you perhaps identify with it. So I think that is a source of happiness. I don't think it's unique to robotics. I think anybody also who is just pursuing something they love, it's easier to work hard at it and be good at it. And um, it, not everybody gets to find that. Uh, I, I do feel lucky uh, in that way. And I think uh, we're lucky as an organization that, that we've been able to build a business around this and that keeps people engaged. So if it's all right, let's linger on Mark for a little bit longer, Mark Raybert. So he, he's a legend. Uh, he's a legendary engineer and roboticist. What, what have you learned about life, about robotics from Mark through all the many years you worked with him? I think the most important lesson, which was, you know, have the courage of your convictions and, and do what you think is interesting. Um, be willing to try to find big, big problems to go after. And at the time, you know, legged locomotion, um, especially in a dynamic machine, nobody had solved it. And that felt like a multi-decade problem to go after. And so, you know, have the courage to go after that because you're interested. Uh, don't worry if it's going to make money. You know, that, that's that been um, a theme. So that that's really uh, probably the most... Uh, uh, Im important lesson, I think, that uh, I got from Mark. How crazy is the effort of doing legged uh, robotics at that time, especially? You know, Mark got some stuff to work, uh, starting from the simple ideas. So, uh, so maybe the other, I, I, another important idea that has really become a value of the company is try to simplify a thing to the core essence. And, and while, you know, Mark was showing videos of animals running across the savanna or uh, uh, climbing mountains, what he started with was a pogo stick because he was trying to reduce the problem to something that was manageable and, and, and getting the pogo stick to balance had in it the fundamental problems that if we solved those, you could eventually extrapolate to something that galloped like a horse. 